This is a video about regression analysis using this Hayes macro that allows one to do interactions and mediation analysis. My interest here is in an interaction. I have data that I've been working on for the coronavirus that we're dealing with right now. And we're looking at case fatality, which is the probability of dying if one has the coronavirus or has been diagnosed. So we're just using diagnosis right now. So you can hear Piper in the background, my parrot. He's all into this. He likes doing data analysis himself. So I created this data set and I have a hospital, which is the number of hospitals per 1,000 individuals in a country. These data are a little rough because they're taken from the World Bank and the most recent data, I think are 2015 or 2016. But you have countries that don't, didn't provide data in that year, so it's kind of like almost like observation carried forward, sort of, but just filling them in with whatever available data we have. But it's all predictive because it all precedes what's going on now. 65 is the proportion of individuals in a country above 65, 64, excuse me, 65 or above. And these are all percentages. And these are also from the World Bank. Case fatality I get every day. I get this from this uh, ArcGIS that data that are being provided by John Hopkins University. I have this variable, which is my own ratio between what's well, actually uh, hospitals divided by, by this 65 variable, but I'm not going to be using it in this analysis, but I have that there too. And density, which is population density. So that's a number of people per square kilometer. This is my data set. I loaded it into SPSS. So you can download into SPSS pretty easily. And so I, I run this analysis, this code, these are the code I've been using. Like one of the variables I'm doing this, I call quad density. So I've created this density variable that's four levels. So if zero to 99 is zero, 100 to 199 is one, 200 to 299 is two, and 300 through the highest value is three. So I call it quad density. And I'm gonna use that for my interaction. I have some interaction terms here if I didn't want to use the Hayes macro, but that's not essential now. So I run this analysis. So if you're not used to running data analyses with code, you should, because as data sets get larger, you want to be able to, oops, I don't want that here. You want, you want it to be able to run whatever you need to do and not have to save every freaking data set you have. You just save the main one. So I put this little red dot here to tell me where I want to stop my run and I'm starting where my cursor is here and I hit run to end and it'll run this, these data for me and shows me I have no errors. If I did, I would get some error message. So my new data set is called coronavirus data set four. It has everything I want in it. So now I'm going to go ahead and run my analysis. By the way, so these are the these interactions, but I'm not using them here. So they, they say unknown, but Scale means continuous variable, and if it's discrete, it's either nominal or ordinal. I had set that in my coding, and here's my four-level variable. So zero is like what I mentioned before. All right, so what I'm going to do now is run this this macro here. So to, to run the macro, SPSS does not have this macro. You have to actually download it. So if you go to the Hayes website, Right here, it says processmacro.org. You can find the download, downloadable coding for it. This is actually really, really easy to do. I had my students do it, and it's like, it takes just seconds to do. But you have to have SPSS, of course, on your computer. If you don't have SPSS, it's not, not going to work. And when, when you get to your data set, you can hit go to Analyze. So I'm going to use a drop-down tab here instead of the code at this moment, it's a little easier. You'll see under regression, we have loaded this process macro version 3.4 by Andrew Hayes. Piper, can you just be quiet for a second? I'm working and he wants to be heard. So I apologize for that. And so I'm going to hit this code right here and it opens up a type of SPSS window. And my dependent variable here is case fatality. Now, when I originally ran case fatality in a regression analysis, I had just um, I had heterogeneity, heterogeneity of variance at the different levels of the predictor, so that's not going to work. So we need to have homogeneity of variance. 
So I log transformed using a natural log transformation and that everything worked out after that. So that's my y variable, my dependent variable. In this case, my primary independent variable is a proportion of uh, population that's 65 or older. And uh, my covariate here, so I'm just going to control for hospitals, the proportion of the number of hospitals per 1,000 individuals. And then also, let's see what else I'm going to do. Oh, yes, so my, my interactions have this four le level variable here. I'm going to put that as a moderator. So now it's a moderator. And when I do that, oh, I think somebody just woke up. Otherwise, Piper, you need to relax. Okay. Somebody else woke up. So that's why it's noise right now. And then I'm going to go under options. And in options, I want to generate code for visualizing interactions because then in a mediate moderation analysis, so the hardest thing to do is to visualize an interaction. So I want that. And I also want to use um, centering for any continuous variable in an interaction. So centering is centering at the mean in this case here. So it's the mean becomes the new zero. And then I have a, a variable, my W variable, my four level variable. I'm going to just have it recoded and have a dummy coded. And so the zero, everything's going to be compared to zero. So if, for instance, every density will be compared in, ter in, in terms of this moderation analysis to the lowest density possible. And then I hit OK. And let's see what happens. Piper, it's running, so it's going to be good. Good stuff. And here's our results. So it shows how the coding was done. So level zero, there's always one less dummy variable than there are levels in uh, any variable, any variable that you're coding from. So zero is going to be the comparison group, which is fine. This is the lowest density. So all the countries with higher density are going to be compared. So it'll be one versus zero, two versus zero, three versus zero. And then here's, well, this, this, um, this analysis accounts or this model accounts for 43% of the variance here. It's significant overall. I'm not really caring about that. I'm more interested in these particular values. So we look at the p-value here, this probability of the observed data given the null hypothesis is true. In this case, the null hypothesis is that the b-value, whatever the, this value is, this coefficient is equal to zero. So lower values are better, especially if they're below, say, 0 0.05, which is the standard. I can go below 0 0.10 here because I don't have a very large data set. I have like 35 countries here listed. I think it's 35. Yeah, 35. Sample size is 35. So let's take a look at this. And so none of, none of these by themselves, these levels are significant. However, the interactions, what I was really interested in was this, any of these. And I do have a significant effect here. So those, so you, what we'll see here is that the effect of being 65 on the case fatality is going to be highest for those in in the lar highest density countries compared to the lowest density countries. We'll see that in a second. And then we also have this hospital, uh, the number of hospitals per 1,000 individuals is negatively related to case fatality, which is something we'd expect. So here we also see, let's see, doo -doo 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 -doo. We also see the the so this is the effect of the focal predictor. So this is the effect of the proportion of the population at or above 65 at each different level of density. You can see where it's most significant at level two and level three. Now, last thing we have is we have the the code that's been prepared by by this program that allows you to visualize the interaction. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that code. So this is why you need to know how to use syntax. I'm going to copy it and paste it into my syntax. I've done this already, so I'm just going to do it again for your viewing pleasure. So I paste it right here. And paste. And then I'll run that code. This one I'm just going to highlight. If you highlight everything, might have coded it. Well, I think this is fine. Hopefully, I didn't just add the you now the norm test is below. Okay, so 
I'm going to run this because I highlighted this area. I'll hit the green button. I'll run it, and what I'll get is this nice visualization. Here. Now, I don't really think this visualization is, visualization is great. So what I did was I double clicked it, and I said, you know, I'm going to take these ones here, these values here, which is the highest value, and that can change the color. For instance, I can make those all black, right, and, and the fill also black, and apply, and that'll change that. Well, the, I needed the fill to be black as well. So, fill is black. There you go. Apply. So I did that, and I produced this, in, and I pasted all this in a Word document and made these really nice colors, so the visualization is easier here. So now you can see if we trace the black dots. Those are for the different levels of, of um, well, what happens with 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 the uh, with our moderator variable? So this is an effect moderator because it moderates the effect of proportion of individuals 65 and above on case fatality. So essentially, here if one is in one of these very high density countries, the effect, the relation between proportion of the population 65 or above in case fatality is very high in comparison to what we have at the lowest level zero, right, the lowest level of density. And that matches what we found in our significance test. So that was good, and I hope you enjoyed this. Sorry about Piper going nuts, but hey, you know, he's got his, he wants his word, he wants to be, the bird wants to be heard, right? All right, as they say, the bird is the word.